Hello, and thank you for joining us today on the Gentle Art of Crushing It show, where we focus on learning and sharing with our listeners all there is to know about how to create success in our lives. This show stands on the shoulders of giants. Our mission is to empower and inspire our listeners to create the life of their dreams whilst having a blast in the process. Let's celebrate life together. Welcome to the show. Hi, Alicia. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, so I'd like to start off by asking you just to please tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, include something that most people wouldn't know about you. Sure. Um, My name is Alicia Bolton. I am a mortgage note investor, which means I buy debt as opposed to the asset behind the debt. Uh, I've been doing that for about a year and a half. I've been a real estate investor for about four years, and I finally sold my last piece of hard property uh, in April. Um, I got a couple of kids. Uh, I quit my full-time job to become a a full-time real estate person in May. Um, So it was a very exciting year for me. Um, and something that not a lot of people know, I was a, a weird person and actually went into the field of study that I had in college. So I was a math and computer science major in college. And I... That is unusual. It is. I was a software developer. I looked at chaos and fractal theory. Like it was... I was in the aerospace industry for about 20 years. And uh, wow. yeah, so... That's super cool. Not a, not a bad way to like launch off into from success to ultra success, right? Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of uh, what I learned about, you know, the detail work and project management and everything is transferred right into my my real estate career. So that's awesome. So you got an actual education while you're in your career as well. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. The learning never stops. The fun never stops. Huh? It doesn't. And I'm so glad for that. It's one of the nice things about note investing is like nothing is the same. You're always learning something new. Now, in, in note investing is like incredibly interesting to me, and I know like many others, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on here. And I wanted to not um, skip over this huge, um, you know, success and congratulations to you. And you know, I look up to you and hope to do this myself soon. Where you decided to walk out on your own in May of this year and become a full time investor. So, congrats! It's huge. Thank you. Thank you. It's been very rewarding to, to not have, I mean, my boss is still kind of a jerk sometimes and she's very, you know, she's, she's kind of a bit of a, a results oriented person, but she's a, she lets me set my own schedule. So that's nice. Yeah. Sounds like a great boss to me. I mean, you know, so, uh, and I know her personally and I'll just stand (laughs) up for a little bit and say that she's awesome. Um, no, that's great. Um, yeah, let me ask you this. What would you say is one of the most uh, valuable, or I'm sorry, please share with us one or more of your favorite successes that either you were a part of or you're, you solely created on your own. So I have two companies. One is just myself and it's kind of managing my personal portfolio and working one-on-one with other people who are interested in notes. And then I have a partnership with three other people and that's where we're really going to grow and scale and leverage, um, you know, everyone's different talents. And our first deal as a, as, a, as our partnership, we bought a tape of 13 notes and the notes themselves aren't the interesting part of the story. It was the, um, kind of the, the preview and how we put the deal together. Cause we had, um, we had a guy who was going to help fund us and we we're going to split. And then he was kind of wishy-washy and he wasn't funding at the right time. And he then went off to Dubai and was unreachable. And we're just like, this whole deal is going to fall apart because our money guy has vanished. Um, and we ended up like piecing it all together. Each of us put in a little bit. We contacted our friends. So it was a joint effort and we were able to take it down. Um, But it was very like nail bitey last minute. Like my reputation was kind of on the line a little bit if we didn't fund this. And And, um, and can I ask you a quick question? Where was the intention up until you actually closed it? Was it sort of wishy-washy? I don't know. Or was it like, we're going to make this happen? So the four of us would never wishy-washy like we're like this is like we believe in this deal we know it's going to make money we know it's like we don't know why the guy or who was you know we don't know why he was um hesitant or you know unwilling to, to take the leap but we were 
100% invested in it. Um, and it turned out to be really great because there were 13 notes. We bought them at non-performing prices, which means that they hadn't been paying for a while. So you, can, they're kind of discounted, right? Yeah. Usually you can get like 55 to 60% of the unpaid balance for a non-performing note. Performing notes, you know, can vary up to, you know, paying actual unpaid balance price for it. Um, but when we got all of the collateral and information, 11 of the 13 were actually performing notes. <laughs> so we were wow. able to take those and bundle them up in a pool and then sell them to another note investor at performing prices. Um, That's so awesome. It was an amazing first deal for us because it kind of has set us up to go into next year really strong. So you bought 11 of those sort of, uh, at like a wholesale price and were able to sell them at a retail price basically? Yes, exactly. And, and I should say that everything that I know about notes, which is very little, I learned it from you. So, you know, uh, so thank you for that. And, and that's huge. I love that. Um, it's such what a great story. And I wanted to throw that intention part in there because I, I knew that you all were like super solid and we're going to make this happen. And I think that that's like can be the difference a lot of times between actually making something happen and, and it not happening, you know, so. Absolutely. Yeah, it's great. Uh, let me ask you this. What would you say is one of the most valuable lessons that you actually learned from this experience? Um, just that there's always a way. Like if you really want something to happen, whether it's a deal or to quit your job or there's always a way and it may not come as you expect it to. Um, I mean, because we fully expected this guy to fund for us and he didn't. So we we, we figured it out. But there's always a way if you're willing to look for it. That, that's great. I love that. And, uh, you know, I think I'm, I might title this one, There's Always a Way. And I think there's a great uh, book title for you right there, you know, if it's not <laughs> taken already. Um, awesome. Let me ask you this. So, uh, yeah, now on the other side, would you mind telling us some of the incredible or one incredibly uh, difficult experiences that you've walked through and what you learned from them or it? So one of the reasons why I really liked note investing was that you can make of it what you will. You don't ever have to leave your office if you don't want to. You can do all of your work in your pajamas. Um, I love you know, that part too. You're, you're investing across the country. You're farming out a lot of the work to, to lawyers or services or other people. Um, and that really became apparent how valuable that was when I fractured my neck in August um, because I was unable to drive. I was unable to fly. I was, you know, in a neck brace pretty much 24 seven and having notes as my niche really solidified that I can do this business as on a maintenance level for a couple hours a week when I'm horizontal um, but when I am ready to scale, I can, you know, go full bore. So it, it was really valuable to learn kind of the bare minimum to keep the wheels on the bus. Mm. Um, and know that like, if I can do it with a broken neck and not being able to leave the house, like you can do this business in any capacity. And how excellent in like, you know, way above average and superstar status, you are going to be at full health, you yeah. know, so it's, it's great. And, and that's actually, you know, um, kind of makes me think of, you know, when we have a job, when we have a career even, which there's nothing wrong with that, but um, what we are doing is building somebody else's dream. Right. And the minute we step away from that job or we become, you know, heaven forbid, injured and we can't work, um, that money stops coming in at a point. Right. So there, it's not a real security if we're looking for to a job or to a career or to a boss to, you know, keep us afloat. Like the security is in our skills, right? Would you agree with that? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I was, I worked with great people in great companies when I was in my W-2. Um and they would have been totally understanding, totally willing to work around my schedule and whatever I needed when that happened. But just knowing that my success was based on the person who cared about it the most, which was me, and that I could, you know, give myself the leeway to heal and, and everything just made it completely 
I don't want to say easy because it was not easy, but it was definitely a lot easier than I was having to rely on somebody else. Yeah. You had you and your boss to rely on, but, uh, you know, I would imagine, and I know that you're, you know, really humble and really modest. I would imagine that was incredibly difficult, painful experience. Like it's obvious. So it was probably more for my husband than me, actually, because he had to take up all of the slack. But right. it was, yeah, definitely a challenge. Awesome. Well, not only are you an overcomer, but your whole family, um, you know, and that's a great, um, you know, uh, a lesson to teach your children, even, you know, hey, adversity happens and you kept pushing forward. It's, you know, it's, it's just amazing. Um, let me ask you this, you know, and I'm actually just going to kind of switch gears here, um, shift the conversation a little bit and ask you if you were able to go back in time, uh, to age 18, knowing what you know now, how would you fast track your success? So this was a really, I enjoyed this question because when I was 18, I had a path. Like I was going to graduate high school, get scholarships, go to a good college, have a 401k, have health insurance. Like that was success to me. Um, I was taught to always invest in my 401k, you know, pay yourself first. Yeah. But that was the sum total of my investing knowledge. I did not know like the stock market was not something I was interested in learning. Gold seemed weird. Like, why would you bury gold in the backyard? Like you were a pirate. Um, <laughs> you know, real estate investing wasn't even on my radar. I knew that I wanted to be a homeowner, but I didn't have any clue. So one of the things that um, a mentor of mine is actually doing next year is going into schools to teach financial literacy That's and awesome. to teach them that, you know, what credit card debt is because I ran into that problem, you know, what investing is and how it can allow you to kind of take control of your situation a lot earlier when you have more time and less to lose. Um, Cause once you're, you know, married or have a significant other and have kids, there's a lot more on your shoulders than when you're, you know, 18, 20 and the kind of world is what you make. And you have a lot of debt and you have bills and yeah. Yeah, yeah, you have mouths to feed, and um, I think you're a lot more willing to take chances when you're 18 than when you're maybe 30. Um, so I would just like not even educate myself on note investing specifically, but just high level like here's how you could invest in houses, here can you be a rental company, like just investing options and teaching yeah. that to the kids. That's great. Yeah, I think that's super sound advice and starting to understand the concept, sort of like a, you know, Robert Kiyosaki moment and, yeah, you know, scramble our, our brains for the better. Um, and I want to like just applaud you for being where you were at at age 18, because for me at age 18, like it was just com the complete opposite, you know what I mean? So um, you got a great uh, you had a, you know, obviously a, a great mind from, from the beginning, a great mindset. And I think that's, uh, you know, benefited you quite a bit, but, um, it doesn't make it any easier, uh, you know, to have the discipline and to choose good choices over bad choices. It's still going to be, you know, take discipline, right? So Absolutely. I love that. Very cool. Um, let me ask you this. What, what are your thoughts on mindset and how to go from a non-success mindset in the case of myself at age 18 to a successful mindset in the case of you at age 18? Well, I don't know that I had a successful mindset at age 18. <laughs> I was very invested in following the plan that had kind of been told to me was the right thing to do to become an adult. Yeah. Um, I think mindset is huge. Um, you know, we met through a mindset coaching group. Um, I got to say that I probably would not be where I am without a mindset coach just because they kind of, I, I'm a planner by nature. Like I like plans. They make me happy. Um, but with investing, you can't plan for everything. And if you try, you're just going to sit yourself on the sideline. So I think understanding that trying everything, seeing what sticks and knowing that with either time or money, you're going to get yourself out of any situation to just try stuff. Mm. Um, and that's a mindset I wouldn't have had five years ago. Definitely not at 18. Um, 
but just be open to the experience. Like you're going to learn something from everything you do, from every conference you do, from every call that you get on. Um, so just try stuff and see what, what the sparks joy. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah. I, I love that so much because, uh, we're all wired differently. And if we're going to try to do something because for the money or if somebody else recommends it or, or it's, our parents want us to do it, we might find ourselves unhappy and just really in a place of being in a rut, you know, whereas if we're trying different things and learning at the same time, learning from our failures, learning from other people's failures, uh, we can find something that may be our vehicle to success. And I wanted to take just a quick second because you did uh, bring it up, the uh, mindset. Um, so we're both members of Jason Dree's Coaching Mindset Academy and Life Coach. Um, it's, it is a, just a, an amazing place. There's a lot of, you know, uh, like-minded people that are really trying to, you know, just make their dreams come true. And so, but uh, that that's, you know, it, it's just been great meeting a lot of people such as yourself and, um, you know, really getting a chance to, to learn a lot. Um, so, and this is similar with the last question. So if there was a key that unlocked or helped to unlock success in your life, um, you know, what would that be? Or you could say multiple keys if you want. Um, I would say, you know, try, be open to trying things. Like you may find something that's just not at all your cup of tea, but just be willing to spend an hour or two digging in to see if it's something. Because a lot of times it's really hard to recognize if like, am I scared of trying something new? Am I scared of failing? Um, you know, if it's something you're truly not interested in, or if it's, you know, a fear of something. Um, and honestly, like an hour or two of time is not a lot to spend to discover if it's, you know, the right, right thing for you. So, I mean, be willing to try, I guess, is my, my most uh, important thing. And I, I say yes to a lot of stuff that I end up being like, Ooh, that, that probably wasn't the best thing to say yes to, <laughs> but I wouldn't have known. Right. I, you wouldn't have. Right. No, I, I love that so much. And it's, you actually brought up a, a point that I think I've never have really ever heard people talking about to so where if we're looking at an opportunity or maybe some route, be it note investing, for example, and, um, we're not actually giving it the time and actually in the introspect that it deserves um, for us to explore it to see if that opportunity is a good fit for us. We might actually be projecting stuff on that, like our, you know, our fears, for example, to block us from being able to see if that is a good opportunity for us or not. And I've never really heard anybody say that. So uh, that's a that's a killer, um, you know, sort of highlight there. So very cool. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Um, all right, so let me go ahead and ask you this question here. Can you give us one awesome book recommendation and one tech recommendation? And it could really be anything. So a book recommendation um, that always puts me in mind a little bit of Dr. Seuss is the Who Not How book. So I'm very, I grew up very much with the, you know, if it's something that I can do, then I need to be doing it, which is a horrible idea if you want a successful business, because then all of the stuff that you're in theory, trying to have a business for, to have free time, to have freedom, to be able to, you, you can't do that if you're relying on yourself to. And you're bottlenecking your business. You're exactly, choking it, right? Exactly. So Who Not How is a really good book. It's a, it's awesome. a, easy to read. It's not, you know, there's. That's some, my kind of book. Yeah, there are some books <laughs> that are just like, oh, this is painful. But this was a this was a good read. Um, and I manage pretty much my whole life in Trello. Um, my note portfolio okay. is such that it's still manageable in, a, in Trello as opposed to like an actual note management software. Um, I have tasks lists and, you know, a daily to-do list and it's all managed in Trello. Um, so that, cool. that was the, the thing that kind of popped into my mind is... Trello is really versatile. It's very visual, which I appreciate. Um, and it's, it's simple. And now, so uh, that's um, sort of like a sauna, right? Almost like a CRM, like a uh, task. Uh, yeah, you can use it um, as a CRM, um, which I don't. Um, but it, it's definitely, 
you know, it's it's easier to use than Podio, but Podio is similar. Um, it's got a lot smaller learning curve um, mm. than Podio, which is what I tried to use before, and it just wasn't. So Trello is... And, uh, okay, and how do you spell Trello? Is it T-R-E-L-L-O or yep. Yep. just like that? Okay. Yep. And do you use a, a paid version or a free version or... Um, I'm right now at the max of my free version, so I will probably be going to the paid version shortly. Um, but yeah, it's pretty, they, they give you a lot for free. Um, so it's, that's cool. And you got to try it out and know, okay, Hey, now I'm willing to pay for it. So exactly. yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. I have not checked into that. I've checked into Asana. Um, I like it, but I didn't actually start using it and, um, a book I haven't read that book who not how so uh, I've heard a lot of people recommend it though so like I think that's a nudge that you know mm -hmm. I've got to actually go ahead and, and check that book out I'm reading the wealthy gardener right now have okay. you read that book I haven't but it's on my bookshelf yeah okay cool <laughs> well that's half the battle right there right, right. right. It's, it's staring at me as I'm talking to you right okay yeah it, it's a, it is a good book it's uh it's it's pretty pretty awesome actually um Okay, cool. So now we're kind of at the part of, let me ask you this, how, how can our audience support you? Is there anything that any sort of deals they can bring to you, note deals that they come across that you're looking for in particular? Um, I'm pretty, I'm not picky about note deals, but it's hard if you're not in the space to know what's a good deal and what's not a good deal. Um, if people are interested in like a passive investment that doesn't have to do with tenants and toilets. Um, I'm happy to have conversations and speak out. I do work with joint venture partners. Uh, I do work with people who want to invest in notes, but don't want to learn how to invest in notes. Um, so if there's that interest, I would love for them to reach out and we could at least just have a conversation. That would be awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you so much for that. And yeah. what's, what would be the best way for our audience to connect with you? If they had questions. Um, so my email is a l e c i a dot b at magpie like the bird p i dot com so m a g p i e p i dot com. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn as Alicia Bolton, and I'm on Facebook because I have to be. Um. <laughs> right, <laughs> that's true. So yeah, uh, is it okay with you with you if I just go ahead and put your email in the show notes? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, very cool. Well, you know, any anything else that you want to share with the audience? Anything on your mind before we wrap it up here? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, a lot of what I said about just, just being willing to try and being open to what opportunities come across your path. You never know what's going to light your fire until you try a bunch of different stuff. So. So true. Yeah, I love that. It's great. And, uh, you know, I just want to thank you again for joining us today. Like, uh, you know, honestly, you're very, very inspirational. And so I love what you're doing. I love the fact that you're taking action on your dreams. And I see in your future just like huge success and you let you nailing those dreams. You know what I mean? So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you again, Alicia. And I'm going to go ahead and sign out for the both of us. And thank you, audience, for uh, watching the show here. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Another episode of The Gentle Art of Crushing It. It was an amazing episode. We know we sure learned a lot, and we hope you did as well. We want to take a second and thank you so much for viewing or listening to this episode. And please just know that we only ask for one favor, and that is to make this life magnificent. Thank you and have a wonderful day.